This is Conversations on Careers and Professional Life, a podcast from the Foster School of Business, MBA Career Management Office. I'm your host, Gregory Heller. On each episode, I talk with guests from faculty and staff to students and business leaders about the skills and strategies that can help you design a professional life that you're happy with. On this episode, I speak with two recent graduates of Foster's Evening MBA program, Joel Graves and Dan Charbonneau. The two were part of a three-person team that won the ACG Cup, a case competition, in early 2019. Case competitions are a great opportunity for students to apply what they're learning, try different functional roles, and network professionally. The ACG Cup is just one of many that students at Foster compete in, and I wanted to give Joel and Dan an opportunity to share their experience with you. Students who are interested in learning more about the ACG Cup can reach out to Joel and Dan and students interested in other case competitions should check in with the MBA program office or the MBAA clubs at Foster to learn more. I hope you enjoy my conversation with Joel Graves and Dan Charbonneau. So I'm here today with two graduates of the evening MBA program. We've got Dan Charbonneau and Joel Graves, and we're going to be speaking about a case competition that they were involved in. Uh, on a team that won and took home the ACG Cup for Foster. Now, if you could each give me a capsule introduction of what you were doing before you came into the program and what you're doing now, I'd love it. Why don't we start with you, Joel? Sure. Well, first of all, thank you, Gregory, for for having us here today. It's quite an honor to come back. Both Dan and I graduated in June, and so it's nice to be back here on campus. When I started the program, I was a communication specialist with a nonprofit called the Washington Roundtable, which does public policy advocacy on behalf of Washington's business community. And I wanted to get an MBA because I wanted to pivot out of the world of politics and get into the corporate world and and get on with uh, one of the great employers that we have in our state. And... Actually, this Friday will be my last day. So by the time this podcast airs, I will be a business program manager at Microsoft in Unified Support, which is Microsoft's uh, enterprise global enterprise support offering. And I'm joining the go-to-market team there. So very thrilled about the, uh, the leverage that Foster gave me to, to make a, a pretty sizable career pivot. Great. Congratulations. So let's hear from you, Dan. Yeah, so before I entered the program, I was working for a General Electric's aviation business. Um, So we're doing jet engines. I was working as an engineer uh, based at Boeing, doing customer support, supporting the factory, a little bit of flight tests, a lot of customer deliveries, but mostly engineering. And I wanted to get more into the business side, so economics, finance. So the case competition was a great opportunity for me to do that. But yeah, attending Foster kind of gave me the... uh, the skills to go on. And now I'm working as a product manager at Amazon for the furniture business there. Congratulations on that transition. So we're talking about the ACG Cup. And uh, why don't you tell me a little bit about what that is, what organization sponsors it, and how students can get involved and find out more about it? Sure. So ACG, the Association for Corporate Growth, is a, a national organization uh, that does a lot of events and networking for mid-career uh, and executives in the, the finance, the M&A, banking industry. And so Dan and I both found out about this competition through Foster, through uh, one of the newsletters that was sent out. And uh, we, were, we were interested in getting involved. And both Dan and I were on the same, we were in the same cohort during year two. And we made the finals of the Foster case competition, so we were itching to get involved in, in another one, and, and that's sort of what, what led to us forming a team and signing up for ACG. So the evening program has a case competition at the beginning of the second year, and you're on a small team, five people? Is that a five-person right. five, five five team? Yep. And uh, you work on a business case. The full-time program has a case competition, the fall integrated case competition, which happens at the end of the first fall quarter for uh, full-time students. And then there are a number of external case competitions. So 
the ACG Cup is an external case competition, which you found out about through probably the MBA program newsletter. So there's some good information in there. Students should definitely pay attention, read all the way to the bottom, because there's some great opportunities. So talk about this opportunity and how you um, prepared for it and uh, how, how it went down. Yeah, so Joel actually approached me. Like he said, we were on the same team and had done the foster case competition. Came in third, thought we could have done better, and we're kind of itching to do another one. So Joel approached me, I think, in October about doing a case competition in December. And I thought, hey, that's two months away. Sure, why not? So I'm, I'm kind of glad you approached me early, earlier because if I, if I look at it now, once you're in the middle of classes and homework and uh, team projects. And a full-time job. And a full-time job. The last thing you want to do is take on additional work. So we got together early, and yeah, one, once we had made the decision to do it, and as a team we kind of made the decision that we wanted to give it our best and, and try to win it, yeah, I think it kind of all went from there. And I'll just say we this particular competition, the the – you know, the guidelines and restrictions vary by case competition. They're all, all, the, all the, the rules are determined by each individual body. This one had a minimum number of participants in each group at two and a maximum of six. They recommended four to, or three to four. So I recruited Dan and then Marie Kike, for who I want to give a shout out to, another 2019 evening student. We formed a team, the three of us. And the case was released on January 1st, and we gathered for a first meeting in first week in January. And Dan was like the finance guy for our team, which was you know largely the reason, of course, that we brought him aboard, his deep, deep knowledge in, in finance. But he's also just had a high level of uh, professionalism. And both, both Dan and Marie and myself, we're all very competitive. And so that's what I noticed during year two. And so I I wanted to assemble a team of people that had really high standards for for performance, people that I knew that could present well, and people that I knew that really wanted to win, and that's the team that we that we assembled. And this case competition, unlike some others, involves a round that happens at Foster, and then there's multiple other rounds. That's right. Yeah. So there's a so this this competition has. In last year, it was 12 different schools from Oregon and Washington. There were six from Oregon, six from Washington. And all of those schools had local competitions at their own university. And so each school sent one team to the semifinals and the finals, which each take place in the same day down in Portland. And how many teams from Foster competed at Foster? I think there were four teams that competed. I should remember that because I was there as part of the... (laughs) the the judging uh you were one evening team and i think the other teams were all full-time teams you talked about how you put together your team you needed to get people who were aligned who are willing to work hard who wanted to win and who had a diverse set of skills so that you would be able to complete this case yeah that's 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 totally right i think one of the biggest attributes for for a good strong performance in these competitions is is desire and, and willingness to go because there's, like like you mentioned, Dan and I, both in the evening program, in addition to full-time work, we're both also dads to young girls. And so uh, we've got a lot going on. And if you have, if you're sort of wishy-washy, if you're sort of one foot in, one foot out when it comes to the case competitions that are above and beyond school, class, work, home, you're not going to do well. And so I knew that Dan and Marie, whatever they set their minds to, they go hard and they go all in. And that's what is super uh, essential. Because it, if you have a, co- a, a team that you assemble for one of these competitions and there's four people and one's not all invested, it really brings down the morale of, of the rest of the team. So you get the case, you have a certain amount of time to work on it, then you compete here with other teams. But then when you go to the semifinals, is it the same case or a different case? So you get the first case and you compete at the university level. So we had four teams competing at the University of Washington. Um, We were selected to go on and represent the school in Portland. Once you're selected, they issue a follow-up to the case. So it's basically the same companies involved, but there's new information added. And so you're I don't want to say it's a completely new case, but there's almost the same amount of work involved in preparing for the second portion of the case. 
And how much time do you have for that second portion? I think that second one was released. So the time, the timeline is the first case are released around the start of the year. Local competition was like second, I think third week in January. And then the new case was released February 1st. And last year's competition was late February. So you have, I think, remember three weeks, two or three weeks to prepare for the local one, two or three weeks to prepare for the, the semifinals and finals. This year, it's a little bit, the semifinals and finals are a little bit later in the year. So students that uh, represent FOSS, represent their school, will have a little bit more time to prepare for that second round. All right. And then what's at stake? 14,000 big ones. Nice. The prize pool. Yeah. So that's another reason to go with a small team. Exactly. More share for each, more share per person. And, and in addition to that, it's a great networking opportunity. So if you're interested at all in going into uh, fields and finance or mergers and acquisitions, um, all of the top folks from not only the Seattle, but also Portland scene are there. You have lunch with them. They're totally open to, to speaking with you, telling you about what they do. A lot of good networking opportunities. And I think someone on the winning team last year, the previous year, and a few others had gotten jobs based off of that case competition and the folks that they had met there. Did either of you get interviews or other net, uh, other like really solid networking connections from the competition? I had met a few folks. I did some inter- informational interviews, but in the end, I didn't wind up going to the like the finance M and A route. Uh, yeah. Okay. Umqua Bank is one of the. They're like the presenting sponsor of the of the event, and they use it as a key recruiting tool for MBA and undergrad. I should I should underscore that this is not just a competition for for MBAs. It's also for undergraduates that that they prefer undergraduates that are studying finance and for other master's level students. And all competing at the same level. So it's not like there's an undergrad track and a master's track. It's just one track. Correct. Okay. So now you're, you're here today, not just to tell me about this experience, but because you want to share this experience with other students at Foster. Is that correct? That's right. Yeah. So, so Dan and I, for us, the ACG cup experience was, we agree a highlight, maybe the top highlight of, of our Foster experience. And so when we were done with it, we wanted to see how we could be involved in subsequent years coming back and as alumni. And so we signed up to be co-liaisons for the University of Washington, which means that our job is to recruit the best, most talented students to compete so that we can retain the trophy next year in 2020. So that's what we're here to do. Well, that sounds great. What do you think the right time in your program to do this case competition is? So we did it in our third and final year. One of the teams the previous year had done it as as second-year students and had done pretty well. I think they came in second place. So either second or third year for the evening students would probably be ideal. And even first year for the full-time students that are, they may have already had a, you know, an internship lined up. Maybe they, maybe they don't, or they're just want some more exposure to the world of finance and some of the, the who's who of finance in, in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't rule out anybody first year evening or full time. I think first, I would say first time, first year, full time, it might be a bit, bit much just cause they have a, a whole lot of other things yeah, going recruiting on. Recruiting season happening right. in full swing there. Yeah, exactly. But it might also be a good opportunity to get your foot in the water, just test it out, see how it, what it's like, and then you'd probably have a bit of a leg up doing it again the second time. So. Yeah. And I, I will say, in addition to the benefits of networking with executives, finance executives, and, and that exposure, for Dan and I, going through the competition, you learn to leverage resources here at Foster, both with staff and with faculty. So I know that when we were going through the, the prep we reached out to you and you helped Marie and me prepare for that, that first round here at Foster, which was every time that you and I meet, I always, I always get a lot out of it. And a lot of it is do better at PowerPoint, but a lot of it is just like presence and nonverbals, body language and all that super key and helpful. And, and actually when we, when they remarked during the finals, they said, they said, your, your team, the presentation that you gave was what I would expect to see. This was a this was a executive of a, a finance firm, said, a very large finance firm. He said, "Your presentation was was what I expect to see uh, in my job." 
and so that was a huge compliment and a testament to the team that helped us prepare here at Foster. Yeah, it's one of the things that I really do enjoy doing, and I work with a lot of students who are going to case competitions. Just met with some folks today who are going to the Microsoft case competition who won the the Foster round and giving that feedback because I think the difference often is the way you present the quality of the PowerPoint because I'm not giving you any feedback on the solution. I, I couldn't give you any feedback on the solution, but I can give you feedback on the clarity with which you deliver the solution. And that is often the difference between uh, the team that wins and the team that doesn't. It's not always the quality of the solution. It is the clarity of the presentation of that solution and the professionalism with which that solution is presented. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, the judges will never see the the pages and pages of of Excel files. They'll see the the final twenty minute presentation. And um, if you can't pass along what you your recommendation and how you derive that recommendation effectively in twenty minutes, they're they're not going to see all of the numbers behind it. I really underestimated also how important the value of storytelling and storytelling in a compelling way is to this. Because to your point, they want to see more than just that you know how to run financial analysis. They want to see that you can walk them through the story that you're trying to tell in a very convincing way. And that is one of the, the keys, I think, to our success was we were able to frame it in a way where we were walking the audience hand in hand throughout our entire presentation so that even if you had never read the case before, you at least knew the narrative that we were trying to tell. And that's key for anybody that's uh, you know listening, observing a presentation. Great advice. So if folks want to learn more about the ACG Cup, how do they get in touch with you? So the website is acgcupnw.com to learn more and register. Like I said, the case will be released on January 1st. There will be an on-campus round in mid-January for those students here at Foster. Keep an eye out for more information and, and materials about how to get involved, how to sign up. And then Dan and I are actually hosting an info session on campus on December 2nd, Monday from 5 to 6 p.m. here on campus for those that want to talk with us and hear our story and hear some some of what made us successful because we really do have a lot of pride and we want to get that trophy and we want to keep it here at Foster. So that's the goal. Yeah, if you're on the fence, join us on December 2nd. Okay, and people can see that trophy in the uh, trophy case on the third floor of Packar Hall. That's right, right, th- right next to our photo. Yeah. Excellent. Well, thank you so much both for coming in today to talk about the ACG Cup and your experience with it. And I look forward to hopefully working with teams who choose to compete in this case competition uh, this year as well. Sounds good. Thanks so much, Gregory, for having us. I think there are three important lessons to take away from Joel and Dan's experience. The first is to pick your team wisely. Look for people who are aligned in their vision for participation in the case competition, people who are willing to put in a similar amount of effort and to seriously compete. The second is to take advantage of the resources available through the MBA program, faculty and staff. And the third is to use external case competitions as an opportunity to expand your network and learn about industries, companies, and roles to help you advance your career search. If you're listening to this episode before December 2nd, 2019, you can join Joel and Dan to learn more about the ACG Cup at 5 p.m. in PACR 393. If you missed the session, you can learn more at acgcupnw.org. Thank you for listening to another episode of Conversations on Careers and Professional Life. I'd love to hear what you think about the podcast. You can email me at gheller at uw.edu. And if you've enjoyed this episode, please share it with a friend or classmate.